Hello chemists and welcome to this week's Two Minute Tuesday. Today I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to work out the enthalpy changes from two different calorimetry experiments that you're going to see on the AQA A-Level Chemistry course. First up then, let's look at these two different ways. On the left hand side, we've got an experiment where one or more of the reactants is a liquid and we're measuring the temperature change from inside the reacting solution. This is usually done in an insulated polystyrene cup to help with the heat loss. And on the right, we've got a method for measuring the enthalpy change from a combustion reaction. And this time we measure the temperature change by heating a mass of water above the fuel burner. For both these methods, we use the same equations to calculate the energy change and ultimately the enthalpy change. But they've got one very important difference. For our chemical reaction on the left, the mass part of the equation comes from the mass of the reacting solution. And for our fuel burner on the right, the mass here comes from how much water we're heating above the fuel burner. C is for the specific heat capacity of the substance being heated, and in both cases we use the value for water, which is 4.18 joules per kelvin per mole. And then we've got delta T. This is change in temperature. Delta is the triangle you see here, and this means change. Now the change in temperature is technically measured in kelvin, but as the steps up in the Kelvin scale are the same as the steps up in a Celsius scale, for a temperature change, we don't need to convert them. Now, our answer from this equation always comes out in joules, and we usually give an enthalpy change in kilojoules as the numbers tend to be quite big. So we'll divide our value by a thousand to get the value in kilojoules. Now onto the last equation. And this equation turns our energy transfer into our enthalpy change. You can see here that we use the minus Q in this equation. This is because so far we've measured the energy of the water or the surroundings, if you like. And what we want to do is turn that round so it's measuring the energy change in the actual chemicals. N here is the number of moles of the limiting reagent in the chemical reaction, or if we're burning the fuels, it's the moles of fuel burnt. So that's our three steps. First, work out the energy transferred then convert it across to joules, and finish by working out the energy change per mole of the reactant, which is the enthalpy change. Thank you chemists for watching this two minute Tuesday. More of them are up here if you haven't already had a look, and click down here to subscribe to the channel.